Hi everyone. So I've been talking about worlds for like a month already, but this time it's actually coming up in just a couple days. That's crazy. It feels like so much has been building up to this. So here is the full schedule in local Valladolid time with my groups highlighted assuming that I make it to all of the finals. And then here it is converted to Eastern time and also to Pacific time. So feel free to screenshot those for reference. I'm in group B for everything. And I'm also going to be commentating individual group D. So leave a comment if you're gonna be up at 3 a.m watching a puzzle competition. <laughs> also, Rika Puzzles on Instagram made this Google Sheet where you can automatically convert the entire schedule to your time zone. So I'm gonna link that right down below. Okay, so the English live streams will be on the World Jigsaw Puzzle Federation YouTube channel and you'll just click the live tab to get to those. And to watch the Spanish live streams, you'll go to the Spanish Jigsaw Puzzle Association channel, and I'm gonna link both of those channels right down below. Okay, so if you remember last year, during her individual final, Kristen had five missing pieces and there was kind of a big debate down in the comments about whether the 10 second penalty should be applied because the way it's always worked is if you have a missing piece, they start a 10 second countdown while you look for it on the floor, in the puzzle box, like all around. If you find it within those 10 seconds and you put it in, then great, that's your time. If not, then at the end of those 10 seconds, that's your new time. But if it's multiple missing pieces, then it was 10 seconds per missing piece. But probably because of what happened with Kristen, they have now amended that rule where if the missing pieces are adjacent to each other, that's going to be considered a manufacturing error and the penalty isn't going to apply. They also included this second line, which to me basically just says that they can take things on a case by case basis and be a little more flexible if issues like this come up again. Also, every time I post a competition video, there's someone in the comments saying that they would hide all of the pieces and then just take the penalty time of an hour and 23 minutes. But the rules specifically say that if you have more than 10 missing pieces, your time isn't going to be counted. I mean, if that happened, I'm not totally sure what they would do. I guess they could let you try again with a new copy of the puzzle. Um, they might just move you to a different preliminary round as long as you're not in the last one. Um, hopefully we are not going to have to find out. <laughs> Another thing that I'm not totally sure if this is new or not, if you look at the new Circle of Colors puzzles, they've been coming with these full-size posters. And so in the rules, they specifically say that you can't assemble the puzzle right on top of the poster. Um, last year, I also spent some time discussing cutting tools for getting into the boxes. Um, they ended up making the change last year, but it should be the same this year. All of the shrink wrap and stickers will already be removed, so we're not gonna need any cutting tools. And earlier this year, you might remember that I accidentally broke the tray rules at Winter Carnival. So just for reference, here are the tray rules for Worlds 2024. So let's look at some of the changes in the schedule between last year and this year, because look at this, they have added so much stuff. So last year they did all of the individual quarterfinals 
all on one day. This year, they've broken it up into two days, but it's still six individual quarterfinal rounds. But the pairs event has changed quite a bit. Last year, they just had three semifinals and then the final. But this year, they've added an entire round. So now it's four quarterfinals going into two semifinals and then the final. Also, all of the pair's prelim rounds are lowered to just an hour and 15 minutes, which I'm sure they had to do just to squeeze everything in. So another interesting thing is that originally they had announced that the pair's final would only be 500 pieces, but then they went back and changed it, and now it's a thousand, just like it has been in previous years. Now, at Nationals earlier this year, they also revealed that the pair's final was only supposed to be 500 pieces, but then when Demelza Houghton was illustrating it, the illustration just got so detailed that they had to bump it up to a thousand. So that makes me wonder if the puzzle we're gonna get for the pair's final is gonna be of a similar busyness level as the Nationals puzzle. But moving on, um, last year we had two teams semifinals and then the final. And this year they just added one more semifinal. So now there's three instead of two. And finally, last year they did the individual final and then the pairs final. But this year they flipped it. So we're gonna be doing pairs first and then individual. And they also lowered the time for the individual final to just 75 minutes. Okay, so now I just want to share a couple requests and things to think about for the people who are actually going to Worlds. So I met so many of you last year, and I'm definitely happy to take a photo with you or sign a copy of one of my Ravensburger puzzles. I just ask that you don't come up to me if I'm filming with Valentina, or if I'm on the competition floor about to compete or having just finished competing. But once I'm out in the spectator area in between rounds, please come say hi. I would be happy to meet you. Um, but also, I can't accept any gifts uh, just because my suitcase space is so tight. Like last year, I was literally wearing two sweaters on the airplane home because I had no space left in my suitcase. Oh, and then something else that I didn't really think about last year is that we're all gonna be seeing the tops of each other's heads quite a lot. Um, last year I had this one piece of hair that was entirely on the wrong side of my part and it was driving me so crazy while I was editing. So, you know, just double check the top. Okay, so these competitions just keep getting faster and faster as more people find out about speed puzzling and wanna sign up. I'm actually glad that I got in early and won that second place at Nationals 22 because it is very unlikely to happen again, <laughs> at least at these bigger competitions. So last year, the fastest individual time was Teresa with 30 minutes on New York City postcard. So I definitely think we're gonna see someone this year get a sub 30 time on an individual puzzle. And I'm just gonna say it, I think that someone might be able to challenge Alejandro for the top spot. We saw Kristen was less than a minute behind him last year, and even more fast people are going this year. So if we look at myspeedpuzzling.com, they introduced a tool where you can connect 
your world's profile to your profile on that site. And then it averages all of your individual 500 piece times from the last three months. So when I took this screenshot, Sarah Schuler was number one, but she only has one eligible puzzle, so we're gonna disregard that. And Alejandro and Kristen aren't on here, but the next top spot is Christian from Poland. His average time is 35 minutes, which is crazy. Doing any puzzle in the 30s is already being one of the best in the world, but the fact that he's averaging 35 minutes, oh my gosh. I cannot wait to see him puzzle in person. So he's going to be in quarterfinal C against Kati and Teresa. So that's going to be such an exciting round. So then Kati is right under him. And then under her are two more Polish puzzlers. Natalia and Victor. So it looks like Poland should have a really strong showing this year. And then it's been jumping around a little, but currently I'm 41st on that list. So, you know, it's good to know where I stand. <laughs> but this list is not perfect because if you've been practicing harder puzzles, then your average time is going to go down. And if you've been practicing easier puzzles, then your time will go up. So it just gives us a general idea of who to look out for. So feel free to screenshot this. Here are some cheat sheets of where everyone who got top 10 at Worlds last year or top 10 at the US Nationals this year are going to be placed. But you never know. I mean, just like Alice at Nationals, someone unknown could show up and win the entire thing. But if you do want to get more familiar with some of the international puzzlers, something that you can do is go to the Speed Puzzle EU Jigsaw Jam results. These are online contests that have been running in Europe all year long. So let's look at some of the results. In contest two, Kristen beat Alejandro by a full minute. Oh, this one is wild. In contest five, Danique beat everyone, including Alejandro, by 20 minutes. So Alejandro won number seven, but then in contest 10, he actually came third behind Kristen and Teresa. Then in 16, Kristen and Victor were ahead of him, but in 17, he came back and he won once again. And then really quick, just a few notable pairs and teams. So Kiara and Kati are pairing up for the first time this year. They got seventh and eighth in the individual final last year. So they're super fast. Alice Rowe is pairing up with Becca Taylor. They're both very fast. Andrea Peng and Kelly Walter won pairs at the US Nationals earlier this year. And even though they're not on the same team, they are keeping that pair for pairs at Worlds. And then in teams, you guys remember when the Czech team won last year? Well, they've shaken things up a bit. So it's still Teresa and Marquetta, but they've added Katerina and Jana. So Katerina and Teresa won pairs together in 2022, and Jana won the individual competition in 2019. So that is going to be a crazy fast team. I wouldn't be surprised if they won again. But all of those really fast Polish puzzlers are also all teaming up together. So that's gonna be really exciting. Okay, so the biggest question is always, what puzzles are they gonna use? So looking at the schedule, we're going to get 
15 500 piece puzzles and 15 1000 piece puzzles. Um, okay, I'm jumping in after I recorded the rest of this video because there has been breaking news. So originally I said that only the final puzzles would be brand new, but Ravensburger just released that the semi-final puzzles will also be brand new. On their website it says eight new puzzles, so here is an updated look at how many will already be released and how many will be brand new for everyone. So something that anyone can do is to go online and to look at the European Ravensburger 2024 catalog. Going through it, you'll probably recognize a lot of these puzzles as past competition puzzles. And you can also go onto the Ravensburger Germany website to see more of the European releases that we might not have here in the US. So I went through and I saved all of the images of all of the puzzles that I could potentially see them using. Um, I ended up with 49 potential 500 piece puzzles. Now, obviously I'm not gonna buy all of those puzzles because that would be so expensive, but I did buy some of them. And I'm also just studying all of the images. That's actually gonna be one of my airplane activities because we're gonna have 12 hours to fill. <laughs> and again, you know, saving the images and just studying them on your computer is something that anyone anywhere in the world can do, even if you don't have access to this many Ravensburger puzzles. Oh, but I also just wanted to note that when I was making my list, I excluded branded puzzles like Star Wars and Disney because we've just never seen those at the big competitions before. I also excluded Christmas puzzles because again, we just haven't seen them before. And I excluded puzzles that I think would just be too hard for the time limits that were given. But I do think that we're gonna see some round puzzles again, like how we had some circle of colors puzzles last year. So I saved every single circle of colors image. And again, I am just studying them and making my plan going into it. And then another series that I think is interesting is the Little Sun puzzles. So as I said, we don't really get licensed puzzles at Worlds, but Little Sun is a nonprofit. So I don't really know how that licensing works, like compared to Disney and Marvel. So then for the thousand piece puzzles, the only time that we're going to get already released thousand piece puzzles is in the team's semifinal. And that's the one where we get to choose two puzzles out of four. So since there are so many thousand piece puzzles out there, I went through and I only saved relatively easy ones, like the ones that we would theoretically choose over harder puzzles. And I still saved 56 of them. So that is a lot of images to study. <laughs> so for the final puzzles, unfortunately, they haven't released any of the artists' names. So unlike Nationals, we just have no hints at all going into it. But if we look at the last two individual finals, they were both photographs of international destinations. So we could get that again, or they could mix it up and give us an illustration. And then last year, we also had that infamous pairs final puzzle. And I feel like they're not gonna make it that hard this time. I really think that they want more than nine pairs to finish the puzzle. <laughs> so maybe they'll go back to a photo like in 2022, 
or maybe it'll just be a slightly easier illustration. But like I said, since they increased the piece count from 500 to 1000, I feel like it has to be a similar busyness level to the puzzle that we got at Nationals. And then for the team's final, last year there was that flat illustration and the fine art painting. And in 22, there was the New York City illustration. And again, the infamous bridge photo. So I definitely think there's gonna be at least one illustration, but then the other one could be a photo or a painting or a collage, <laughs> like you just never know. So something that I talked about last year is the country rule, where instead of it being like the top 60 or whatever that make it through, they do the top person for a certain number of countries and then fill out the rest with the top times. And there was a little debate about whether that was fair or not, but Rika Puzzles on Instagram did some very in-depth analysis about how much of a difference it actually made. So I highly recommend clicking through the entire thing, which I'm gonna link below, but here are some highlights. So for the individual quarterfinals, it's really only a couple of people who were affected by this rule and the top 50 competitors always made it through. Unfortunately, round D was an anomaly. That's the one that I talked about last year that Katie got caught in. So here you can see every single quarterfinal round showing which competitors moved on because of time, who moved on because of the country rule, and who got skipped over. So then for the pairs qualifying rounds, um, the country rule made no difference at all since enough unique countries had fast enough puzzlers. And then for the team qualifying rounds, the country rule was actually kind of confusing and it also included a disqualification that shuffled some things around. So I'd recommend just reading Rika's analysis if you wanna try to get your head around it. Now for this year, Rika did such a great job typing everything out. So I'm just gonna share her slides. Uh, feel free to pause here to read them. Basically the country rule didn't make as much of a difference as I thought, so unless something crazy happens, I'm not planning to talk about it again this year. All right, it's time to get started on my solo practice for worlds. So this is a puzzle that I definitely think is going to be showing up because in Worlds 22, we had London postcard. In Worlds 23, we had New York City postcard. And so now they released Paris postcard. So I cannot see a world where they don't use this one. <laughs> so I'm not even gonna bother doing a speed run where I haven't studied the picture because if they're gonna use it, like, I should be as prepared as possible. So of course, if I hadn't practiced this one, I probably would have gotten it at Worlds. And since I am practicing it, I definitely will not get it at Worlds because that's the way the world works. But I did a pretty traditional solve for this one. I just started with the entire edge and then started grabbing different sections. And even though I had studied the image, I was still consulting the box quite a bit. So I know that the next time that I do it, it'll definitely go faster once I know where each of the elements has to go. Um, <laughs> my time is 42.14. Isn't that almost exactly my time 
from my first time doing the New York one at Worlds last year, but let's go on to myspeedpuzzling.com and see um, what the other times are, because I, I looked before and they're, they're very fast. Let me start with my time, 42... 14 would put me at 20th place from everyone who's recorded times on myspeedpuzzling.com. But the top time is from Veronica, who did it in 28 minutes. That is so incredible. I really do think at Worlds this year, we're going to see someone get a sub 30 time for a solo puzzle. It could be this exact puzzle where someone does it. Um, oh my gosh, I was just about to film my next intro and I just found a puzzle piece on the floor. Uh, <laughs> do I know what puzzle this goes to? Oh no. <laughs> Um, okay, I'm gonna have to brainstorm. I'm gonna have to figure this out. Anyway, here's what I'm doing next. So I'm gonna do another circle of colors puzzle. And once again, I have studied the image and made a game plan going into it. So I've learned that when the image goes all the way out to the edge, it is worth finishing the edge first thing. Then I think I'm gonna try to do this bright yellow, like this hot air balloon and the moon. Then I think I'm going to move into the greens, possibly the blues, but we'll see how they look. And then come around this way from the warm reds down into the cooler purples. And then fill in anything that's left of this um, starry background. Um, I actually haven't looked at the times yet for this one, so I don't even know what I'm trying to beat. Uh, maybe that's healthy though. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna look afterwards. Um, okay, so at the beginning there, I stopped for a sec to turn on the air conditioner, which is non-negotiable in LA in the summer. But then I grabbed the edge and having the edge in place made this one go very smoothly. Then I actually started with green because that jumped out to me the most. And then I feel like the moon kind of took a long time, but afterwards I was glad that I had it to work off of. So the easy thing with this puzzle is that each element has a clearly defined edge and a unique texture. So it was easy to identify what was on each piece. Also, the background looks all black, but it has slight tints warmer or cooler across the puzzle. So it was even easy to identify the background pieces. So at the end, I definitely slowed down on the blue section. Um, I definitely think this was the hardest part of the puzzle, even though there weren't that many pieces left. All right, 46 minutes. I'm totally happy with that. Anytime I can get under 50 minutes for my first attempt, I think that's great. So this one was definitely pretty easy, but I always have it in the back of my mind. If I'm finding it easy and doing it really fast, there's definitely a bunch of other people who are doing it way faster. So let's take a look. All right, well, the fastest time is 34 minutes. <laughs> That's really good. Yeah, there's a bunch here that are in the 30s. It looks like the top six all finished it in the 30s. Also, just to reiterate, on myspeedpuzzling.com, this is not a competition. Um, these are just people doing it at home, just like this, and then recording their times. So we could be doing it in all different you know, table sizes and lighting and all different setups. But it does give you kind of a general idea of where you stand. So I would have been 16th place on here. All right, um, this is all the same day, by the way. I'm um, feeling very motivated to puzzle today and not to do anything else that is on my list. So the next one we're gonna do is gonna be 
much harder than the two that I just did. So this is the Dandelions at Sunset puzzle. It's very similar to the Lupins puzzle from last year where you have a sunset and then um, some flowers here in front and then a landscape that comes back like towards the middle. And on the back you can actually see the summer thunderstorm puzzle that they uh, used last year at Worlds. So I think I saw this one in one of the Spanish puzzle stores that I visited last year and I thought then that this might be used. It was not used at Worlds last year so I still think now that it might be used this year. So <laughs> this is not a puzzle that I would choose. I'm not particularly looking forward to it but just in case, I think it's a good one to practice. So just like the other puzzle, I knew that the sky would not be a problem. So I started with the sky edge and I started filling that in and I loved that sky. I was having a great time and I was like, maybe I overestimated this. Then I worked my way into the top of the horizon and again, I was like, this isn't bad at all. I even did the big dandelions, which were easier than I thought. So at about 30 minutes in, I was like, this is fine. This is so easy. <laughs> but um, then after I finished the edge, I was just like, never mind. So I probably should have shape sorted a little sooner because everything at this point, which is like a third of the puzzle, it all looked exactly the same. So eventually I did shape sort and that definitely helped, but this part of the puzzle was just as bad as I expected it to be. Oh man, that was a lot. That took me an hour, five minutes and five seconds. So two minutes faster than the one from last year, but Still quite a while. Okay, well, no surprise there. Teresa is number one. She did it in 54 minutes, but I have the currently the ninth fastest time, which I think is pretty good. All right, I'm gonna power through. I'm gonna do one more puzzle. So this is the Circle of Colors pizza puzzle and it's kind of similar to the Poke Bowl one that I had to do last year, where you have the rings of color coming out. So once again, I expect everything up to about orange to go pretty quickly, but then you really do just have a lot of the same thing over and over again. It's not like they have a lot of um, different textures within the same color. So <laughs> I think this is gonna be hard. I guess my goal is just under an hour. I don't know, we'll see. So as I suspected, the middle of this puzzle was very easy. I was moving so quickly up through mm, about the orange pieces, but then I started grabbing yellows and something I didn't think about is that the crust is a similar color to the yellow on the pizza. So that took a few extra seconds to sort out. And it's not like you can even jump around to a different section. You really do just have to keep working your way out from the center. So I actually think the greens were the hardest part of this puzzle because there were just so many of them and the light green kind of blended into the dark green. That's the thing with this illustration style. And we saw it too with the Canada puzzle that we did as a team. It is so much harder when everything blends into each other instead of having sharp lines between each element. All right, I have changed my mind. I don't think they're gonna use this puzzle at Worlds. And I also think if I go to Worlds, and pull this puzzle out of the bag, I think I'm just gonna start crying. <laughs> You'll just see me fall out of my chair and cry in a heap on the floor. So that took me an hour and eight minutes and 41 seconds. 
So it is about the same difficulty as Lupines, which they did use at Worlds, so I guess this is on the table. Oh, well, <laughs> I guess a lot of the really fast people haven't done this one yet because uh, Gail is the fastest on MySpeedPuzzling.com and she's at 111. So I guess until like Teresa decides to do this one, maybe I'll be number one for, for just a little while. <laughs> um, quick update, since filming that, I have been knocked down to third, but Amelia and Maja weren't significantly faster than me. Okay, so during that practice day, I did two very easy puzzles and two very hard puzzles. So let's move on to some medium ones. So I actually had some pretty interesting results with this puzzle, Blossom Park. I did it twice, two days in a row. The first time was at night, so I had the overhead lights on, which caused some glare. I also was very afraid of those houses all in the middle, so I tried to attack it with the trees first, which didn't really work that well. So the second time, I was much more familiar with where everything went, and I started getting the houses in place much earlier because they are actually pretty distinct from each other. And this is such a drastic drop. I lowered my time by 15 minutes, which is kind of stressful because you never know what image you're gonna get. And if you go at it the wrong way, it can have a really big effect on your time. So the next one is Minu's Pond Daydreams. So last year when I did this one, it took me an hour and 25 minutes. So then this year, um, I did it slowly off camera. I just kind of re-familiarized myself with the picture. And then I did it again for a third time but as a speed run. So that's the video that you're seeing. So in my first attempt last year, I tried to start with the water, but in my new solve, I realized that starting with the pinks and working my way in towards the water was a lot easier. I also tried to only put pieces inside the border when I knew where they went. So it wasn't nearly as crowded. So once again, that's a very significant difference. I got my time to 51 minutes. So if we get this puzzle at Worlds, I'm gonna be so prepared. So those were the most interesting ones, but I've been doing so much practice. So here are a few more of my times but I think this video is long enough. So I'm gonna put all of those time lapses and my analysis over on Patreon. All right, well, I think that's everything. So I'll see you on the live streams. Um, the best place to get updates from me is gonna be on my Instagram story. Oh, and one more fun thing. A while back, Alejandro posted this photo of him solving a puzzle in his mind. <laughs> so, you know, just an idea if anyone needs an activity for the airplane. <laughs> All right, so let me know down in the comments if you have any other questions or if you have any of your own predictions for what's gonna happen. So your code word will just be to wish us all good luck and I'll see you in Spain. <laughs>